Shut up and jam, what a concept. You know, as soon as I wrap up my daily obligations, as we the people, you know, making sure that my elected employees are accountable to that whimsical oath to the U.S. Constitution, after I hammer that important job, then I grab my guitar and cleanse my soul and I've been known to shut up and jam temporarily. I don't really have many opinions but I understand self-evident truth, and I understand logic, and I understand common sense based on lifetimes and history of experimenting and trying not to repeat dangerous and destructive mistakes. So that self-evident truth and common sense, I find, is very common and sensible across the land. So I don't really care what you believe in. I mean, I do care because I'd like you to believe in the right things and the positive things and the good things, but I'm a public performer, so I can't frisk the spirit of everybody that comes to my concert. So we don't have to agree on anything except the music when the curtain goes up, you know what I mean? And I got a lot of friends that are liberals and I'm slowly but surely fixing that. I do have the remedy, and uh, but in the meantime, we can shut up and jam and have a good musical get down, and we do every night. John Lennon's Imagine is about living a fantasy, which is a lie, and it'll never happen, and if that's what you pursue, have a nice day. I'll meet you at the Gaza Strip, and we'll see how that piece of love is working out for you. So, so I know I'm on the right course, and my haters, number one, are all wrong, they're all bad, they're all brain dead, they're all soulless, and they're literally chimps marching, like Planet of the Apes chimps marching to the Saul Alinsky, Joseph Goebel propaganda lying machinery to not just disagree with their enemies, but to destroy their enemies. Tom Morello claims to be an ultra-liberal, but let's examine Tom Morello's life, shall we? Works really hard, gets up early, puts his heart and soul into being the best of his craftsmen he can be, provides for, protects his family, is true to his family. So far, he sounds an awful lot like Ted Nugent. Wants to help people, still sounds like Ted Nugent. The difference between Tom and I, and again, Shut Up and Jam is probably, if it's a, a shout out to anybody, is probably a shout out to my good friend Tom Morello because we talk politics and we should do it on film sometime because it's quite telling. Because the typical liberal, when they attempt to debate me, always ends up with a very predictable statement. Yeah, but still, <laughs> no, not yet, but still, if you give people stuff, Dependence will be the result. If you give a beggar money, you're helping to kill him because he will spend that money while you lie to yourself and feel good. You've actually expedited the death of that individual because he will buy dangerous, deadly things with that money. You gotta be kidding me. If he wants a sandwich, give him a sandwich. That's not what he wants. My point being is that Tom Morello, I love him dearly. I respect his musical genius. And I respect him as a man. And when it gets time to have a le legitimate, we the people, political debate, we remain civil and gentlemanly. And then eventually we can shut up and jam because we both come from the Chuck Berry school of uppity, spirited, freedom-drenched American rhythm and blues. I'm a charity guy. My whole life pretty much nowadays revolves around charity. I don't think you can name a children's charity that the Nugent family isn't involved with. We've done it for the Ronald McDonald Cancer House and St. Jude's and, and the Children's Leukemia Foundation and the uh, Hunt of a Lifetime and the Make-A-Wish. I mean, it, it goes on and on, the cystic fibrosis ones. and We can't say no. And every military charity, once we vet them and make sure that the donations and the charity goes to the heroes of the military and not to administration, we're involved with all that. I, I proudly represent OperationFinallyHome.org where we uh, build cost-free custom homes for the heroes of the military and their families. Also, our own Freedom's Angels, we're working with the K-9s for Warriors right now because one of the greatest moving experiences in our life, Shemaine and I, is we love our dogs. We, our life, 
revolves around our dogs. We're just happy and gonzos. That's all we do is shoot squirrels for happy and gonzo, and uh, which is true love, by the way. So we know what dogs bring in a healing capacity, and in the in a in a love of life and responsibility of uh, pet ownership. Well, when you see a severely shattered, wounded, both physically and psychologically, big tough commando of the armed forces, um, just completely lose it because of the trauma. And I'm gonna, I'll say what is very uncomfortable. It's, it's the most uncomfortable thing I can say as a human being and as an American, that the post-traumatic stress syndrome and suicide rate is an all-time high. And again, this hurts me to say this. This is the last thing I want to think or say. But it's because their commander-in-chief is the enemy. He violates the Constitution that their buddies came home in a box fighting for. Those are their words. I wouldn't assume that. Hundreds of those guys have told me that. They're, they don't know what to do. How do you do that? Like in Braveheart, when he goes after the, to get the king and he sends a lanceman to get him and the lanceman turns out to be his friend. And then Br William Wallace, he just uh, takes the air out of him. My own blood brother turned on me. That's how these guys feel. We fix that with a dog. We get these very special dogs. It takes a lot of training because you have to train these dogs to sense an event, sense the tension in their master. I, I could cry here for you. It saves their lives. And I mean, every one that we get a dog to, but it's very expensive because these dogs have to be trained for six to 12 months to learn to sense like, a, like an epilepsy fit or something or post-traumatic stress, which is more elusive. 